just by looking at both the recent and the upcoming updates of Blender 3 and Blender 4, we can see that everything is moving towards providing users, artists and developers with procedural tools. And this is obviously happening for a good reason. So how is proceduralism changing 3D in all of its aspects and why you should use it? Because if you are not, you are missing out on so much. So first things first. What is proceduralism? Generally speaking in 3D, proceduralism is the use of mathematical algorithms and equations to create textures, models, and other 3D assets. And as you may already know, it is a flexible method that allows you to create assets once and easily adjust them to fit in different and specific cases. Procedural tools are usually implemented as a large set of nodes where each node can have from zero to multiple inputs and outputs. And by combining the right nodes together, we can get node graphs that produce the assets we need in our projects. Proceduralism can be used in almost every aspect of the 3D production pipeline, including modeling, texturing, animation, and more. Some of the most popular software that offer the ability to create assets procedurally are Houdini, Substance 3D Designer, Blender, Maya, and almost every other major 3D package out there. And the ones that don't have it will have to have it at some point. Because procedural tools are very important and powerful tools, and once you know how to use them, they become a really powerful and useful tool to create different projects, whether it be in VFX, game development, ArcViz, and so much more. For example, if we talk about proceduralism in 3D modeling and texturing, we have numerous benefits of modeling objects procedurally. The process is relatively faster, especially for large projects, and this is why it is used in the first place, where the assets are going to be reused all across the environment. Also, it allows easier asset modification at a point where you can iterate through thousands of unique object variations with only a slider setting. In addition to the fact that procedural modeling is just a set of rules or steps in which the geometry is gradually taking shape with each and every node that passes through. And this happens in a non-destructive workflow. This means you can go back and restart at any point of the process or edit only certain parts of the node tree in a modular manner, making it a very efficient way to create assets. There are no limits for proceduralism in 3D modeling, as it is based on real-world mathematical principles. So artists can even produce a more organic and realistic look in a final output. Also, procedural texturing is a process that every 3D artist need to have in their skill set. Similar to procedural modeling, it comes with the benefit that procedural textures can be easily adjusted and modified, which makes it much easier to create a large number of variations on the same texture without having to manually create each one of them. It can be used to create highly detailed and complex textures that would be difficult, if not impossible, to create manually. This is the case because it can include a wide range of parameters such as noise, fractals, and specific patterns that can be used to create intricate details and surface variations. Also, one of the most important advantages when texturing with math, and especially if you have close-up shots in your projects, is the fact that the textures are infinitely scalable, meaning they don't lose quality when you zoom in, just until you decide to bake everything into passes. Even if you are new to procedural modeling and texturing, there are several tools and add-ons that can make it easier to generate assets procedurally. For example, in Blender there are free add-ons to create procedural trees, rocks, roads, or even buildings and cities within minutes. And for textures, there is for instance Sanctus Library, that not only includes over 320 procedural materials, but also shader tools, which are fully customizable node groups of procedural textures that can be used to create more advanced materials, which is just great. For more details on this, check the video we created about procedural Blender add-ons. Before we continue, I want to let you know about Envato Elements, which is one of the best markets to get, share, and sell your assets, including video, audio, and any digital asset under the sun. 
If you don't know what the Envato market is, it is a huge online marketplace featuring over 9 million digital products created by a global community of designers, developers, 3D artists, illustrators, producers, and so on. Basically, if you can't find it here, good luck finding it anywhere else. So, if you are a motion graphic artist, a designer, or a video editor in need of assets, elements, backgrounds, photos, effects, brushes, you name it, Invano Market got you covered. It will basically help you push your projects, movies, games, or videos to the next level, empower up your workflow using graphics templates, stock videos and photos, in addition to royalty-free music, and much more, which can save you a lot of time and effort. So, if you are interested, you will find the necessary links in the description. Now we're going to talk about another thing which is more interesting, which is procedural animation. Proceduralism is not limited to just textures and models. It can also be applied to compositing, animation, and even game development. We all know the basics of animation, right? We insert keyframes that determine the position of objects in each frame of an animation, resulting in the movement in between. Procedural animation works in a similar way, but instead of manually setting keyframes, we use mathematical expressions to generate animations automatically. This method changes everything in the way that 3D animations are created. One example of procedural animation is using physics simulations to generate realistic movements, such as cloth simulation to create the movement of flag with the wind, or a rigid body simulation to simulate the movement of falling objects, etc. Of course, it is also an essential skill for 3D artists, especially for projects that have relation to motion graphics. Suppose you want to animate a character walking down the street. With traditional keyframe animation, you would need to manually animate each step, adjusting the position, rotation, and timing of each keyframe. In contrast, Procedural animation allows you to use a pre-made walk cycle and modify the speed, emotion, and mood of the character's movement through a simple set of parameters. This approach can considerably reduce the time and effort needed to produce the animation, but at the same time, getting a natural-looking and authentic result. In game development, for example, procedural tools are utilized in almost every step of the game production, from open world creation, natural foliage scattering and animation, conditional events, narrative, and more. The most famous example of proceduralism in video games is the best-selling video game of all time, which is Minecraft. Minecraft worlds and environments are completely generated procedurally, which means that each new game you start is a unique one. This is one of the reasons why the game has been immensely successful. Game engines such as Unreal Engine provide environments in which developers can create assets and program their games using notes, and in Unreal it is called Blueprint. It is a visual scripting language and toolset that allows game developers to create gameplay logic and behavior without writing code, which is great especially right now. Blueprints also allow developers to create complex systems, including those that use procedural generation by connecting nodes and creating flowcharts that represent logic and actions. This means that it is accessible by developers of all levels of skill, including those with no programming experience, making it easier for you and I to contribute to gameplay development while also significantly reducing game development expenses through minimizing the need to hire dedicated programmers, which is expensive and hard to find. Let's jump now into a quick comparison between the procedural and traditional methods in order to know what we are at right now. So, traditional 3D modeling or texturing involves creating the assets manually, either by sculpting, editing primitives, or painting and combining image textures together. One of the biggest advantages of traditional methods is that it allows for a complete artistic control. So you have full control over every aspect of the production or the design of assets from the overall shape to the finest details. This level of control makes traditional modeling ideal for creating unique, one-of-a-kind models, whereas the procedural way of creating assets can be less precise but still maintains a much faster, 
and it is more ideal for filling large scenes and environments. Professional artists know how to combine both methods and know when to apply each one of them, especially when working on big projects such as video games. But you as well, if you are a beginner, can use this to your advantage to work on your personal projects and create amazing stuff. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.